Welcome back everyone. Uh, in this lecture, we will continue with the proof of uh, wild character formula. Uh, for that purpose, uh, first we need to define the Laplacian operator on this uh, formal power series ring. So, let us uh, define it uh, and we will make some observ observations about this uh, Laplacian operator. So, uh, recall uh, this Q double bracket lambda by 2. So, this is the formal power series. generated by e power lambda where lambda comes from lambda by 2. So, over the rationals. Okay. So, one can actually view the element of this uh, uh, formal power series as just a formal power series in this variables e power lambda. So, f is in q bracket double bracket lambda by 2, uh, then one can write this f as summation a mu e power mu, mu comes from lambda by 2. Note that lambda by 2 is actually a countable set. So, we are talking about only the countable sum. So, this summation is treated as a formal power series. Okay. So, for example, if you are planning to add a two power series, you just add them uh, just to coefficient uh, wise. So, this e power mu coefficients you just add them. Okay, Let us let us actually define what is the addition and the multiplication here. So, if you take these two elements f and g, so you write f equal to summation a mu e power mu and then g to be summation b mu e power mu, then f plus g is defined to be summation a mu plus b mu times e power mu. And what is the product? The product is given by convolution product. You take this product e power lambda times e power lambda dash to be e power lambda plus lambda dash and then extend this bilinearly. So, this is exactly summation, summation a gamma b gamma dash where gamma plus gamma dash equal to mu times this e power mu u run over. And note that uh, to define this f g we demand that this this product indeed finite okay this is indeed finite sum. Okay. And this is something ensured in the definition of formal power series. Okay. So, we are not going to define very rigorously what it is and so on. But uh, so, what is more important for us to remember that so, whenever you want to do algebra in this uh, in this formal power series world, so you can do as long as the coefficients are all finite, there is no issue. So, for example, so, only problem that may occur when you take the product. So, so this part should be finite, then only you will be able to sum, sum this coefficients and then make finite sum. And one can actually take for example, logarithm, exponential, even derivatives, everything makes sense in the formal world. And those things make sense as long as you have uh, this uh, coefficients are all finite in that uh, corresponding operations. Okay. So, let us say we are working here and then we want to define this Laplacian operator, let us call it L. So, this is the operator that is defined on this uh, on this ring formal power series ring. So, which is uh, given by this cube double bracket lambda by 2. So, the way you define this operator, you define it on the basis and then extend uh, linearly. So, this L of e power lambda uh, is defined to be the norm lambda square e power lambda. Okay. And this is for all lambda comes from lambda by 2. And most of the time, we will be only actually dealing with elements which has finite supports. So, we do not need to really uh, worry about uh, uh, these operators. So, now uh, let us actually take 
uh, this operator and then restrict to for example, anti-symmetric uh, elements and then there we want to make some uh, observations. So, what we are going to do, we take this operator restrict to this q bracket lambda. So, there we do not have any issue. For example, we can define this operator extend this uh, linearly because everything is a finite, everything is finite sum there. Uh, but then uh, what we are going to do, we are going to further restrict to anti-symmetric elements. So, let us restrict to the anti-symmetric part of this uh, q bracket lambda. So, what is this? By definition, this is those f inside q bracket lambda such that f is anti-symmetric. And we have already seen that uh, this is indeed a subring of this q bracket lambda, sorry not subring, it is a subspace. Okay. So, the addition and then uh, scalar multiplication all preserve this anti-symmetric property, but product of two anti-symmetric will be symmetric okay, that we do not want. But this is a vector subspace. So, what is the basis of this? So, we already seen uh, what will be the basis. So, if you take this while sum S lambda plus rho where lambda runs over all dominant weights that will actually form a basis for this uh, uh, set anti-symmetric elements of Q lambda. So, let us call this is capital A okay. and uh, so this is simple exercise that if you take this uh, while sums S lambda plus rho where lambda comes from lambda plus. So, this form EZ basis. So, this form a EZ basis of this capital A or Q bracket lambda anti symmetry. Okay, so, this is more or less I proved it in the last class. So, the only thing that you need to actually verify is that S lambda plus rho they form actually linearly independent set. So, we already said that it will form actually a spanning set for this anti symmetric elements that is the compu computation I did in the last class. To prove it is linearly independent, uh, you have to notice uh, one thing about the definition of S lambda plus rho. The S lambda plus rho defined to be the sign of sigma e power sigma of lambda plus rho where sigma runs over S n plus 1. So, then you can easily see that this is indeed can be written as e power lambda plus rho plus some lower terms. What I mean by lower terms? Lower terms with respect to the dominance order. The sigma lambda plus rho is indeed smaller than lambda plus rho in the dominance order for all sigma inside S n plus 1. And when sigma is non-identity, it is going to be strictly smaller. So, that actually kind of tells you that S lambda plus rho is given as e power lambda plus rho plus lower terms. So, now if you have some relations among S lambda plus rho that will actually yield relations among this e power lambda plus rho, uh, but e power lambda plus rho that will form a basis not basis, it will form a spanning set in uh, it is actually linearly independent inside this q bracket lambda by definition. So, that will imply that this S lambda plus rho they are all linearly independent. So, that proves indeed this is uh, EZ basis. So, now using this you can observe that uh, what it does to like uh, in terms of this Laplacians. So, when you compute uh, the Laplacian of this S lambda plus rho, it is not hard to see that this is indeed eigenvector for this Laplacian. So, just apply Laplacian on this S lambda plus rho. Recall that the L of e power mu is nothing but norm mu square e power mu. So, that is by definition of the Laplacian. So, now uh, if you take this L of S lambda plus rho, uh, then you can easily see that this is going to be the sign of sigma norm sigma lambda plus rho square times e power sigma lambda plus rho 
lambda sorry sigma runs over s n plus 1. But what is this norm sigma lambda plus rho square which is nothing but the inner product sigma lambda plus rho comma sigma lambda plus rho. But the sigma is coming from actually the wild group which is s n plus 1. So, but the wild group is generated by the simple reflections s i. So, in particularly the inner product is invariant under this uh, wild group action. So, that means, so, so all these uh, sigmas they are all act as act as orthogonal transformations. So, they preserve the inner product. So, in particularly this is exactly same as lambda plus rho comma lambda plus rho which is same as norm lambda plus rho square. So, now if you substitute that in, in this equation then you get L of s lambda plus rho is exactly equal to norm lambda plus rho square s lambda plus rho. So, this tells you that if you apply this Laplacian on s lambda plus rho then you get exactly norm lambda plus rho square s lambda plus rho. So, that means s lambda plus rho is an Eigen vector corresponding to the Eigen value lambda plus rho square. But there is something interesting about uh, these uh, uh, Eigen values. Okay. So, it is a simple exercise to see that for given 2 lambda 1 and lambda 2 in lambda plus. So, we have lambda 1 plus rho the norm is same as let us say lambda plus lambda 2 plus rho square if and only if this lambda 1 must be same as lambda 2. Okay. So, because this lambda 1 and lambda 2 they are actually coming from lambda plus. So, now, so we will be able to like because so, so you will be able to uh, compare them. Okay. So, in case uh, if lambda 1 is less than or equal to lambda 2, then it cannot be strictly less than lambda 2 uh, with this actually uh, equality. Okay. So, that is why like it will imply that uh, whenever the norms are same, then that implies lambda 1 is same as lambda 2. So, maybe I will leave it to you to think about it, it is not very hard to prove actually. But then it says that, uh, so if you actually take this basis S lambda plus rho, where lambda comes from lambda plus, so this forms z basis of this uh, Q bracket lambda anti-symmetric. So, this space and this also consisting of Eigen vectors of this uh, Laplacian L. So, these are all nothing but L Eigen vectors. So, that also forms a z basis of this Q bracket lambda anti symmetric elements. So, this S lambda plus rho they are uh, Eigen vectors for the Laplacians and they also corresponds to uh, distinct Eigen values. Okay. So, that means, uh, in case if you are interested in proving okay, the wild character formula, so then that can be reinterpreted as follows. So, now as a simple corollary, you can see that. So, the what is the wild character formula? The wild character formula tells you that chi lambda must be same as S lambda plus rho divided by S rho. So, this is equivalent to saying that S rho is times chi lambda must be S lambda plus rho. So, this is more or less by definition. So, in case if you want to prove this, so then one can prove that S rho times chi lambda is same as S lambda plus rho. You can say that this is if and only if the Laplacian applied to S rho chi lambda. So, that is exactly same as norm lambda plus rho square s rho chi lambda. Okay. So, it is enough to prove that s rho chi lambda becomes 
eigen vector for this Laplacian L with the eigen value norm lambda plus rho square. So, if it is the case then you can easily see that this will be written as sum of uh, corresponding eigen vectors ok, but we know that this uh, s lambda rho s lambda plus rho is the only eigen vector of L that actually satisfy this condition. So, that forces that this s rho chi lambda will be same as s lambda plus rho. So, this is simple observation that comes from the observation that these s lambda plus rho they are all Laplacian eigenvectors and they form a basis for this uh, anti-symmetric elements of this q bracket lambda. So, that is the motivation to define this Laplacian. Indeed, we will actually prove that using Fradenthal formula uh, that this thing is true that when you actually look at this s rho times chi lambda that becomes an eigenvector for the Laplacian uh, with the eigen value norm lambda plus rho square. So, that is the computation that uh, we want to finally do it. But before that uh, uh, let us actually define one bilinear form on this uh, formal power series ring and we need it uh, to do the some computation. So, let us call it as a bracket. So, this is the bilinear form. So, that we, we want to define it on this formal power series algebra. So, what it is? So, this is uh, by definition. So, you take some two elements uh, f g and then because we want to define the bilinear form, it is enough to define it on the basis. So, let us actually define it on the basis as follows. The bracket uh, e power lambda e power mu that is defined to be lambda mu times e power lambda plus mu for all lambda mu inside this uh, q bracket sorry lambda by 2. So, we are it is ok to define it for the basis element and extend it uh, linearly to all the elements. So, now uh, one can compute the following ok. So, here is the exercise. So, maybe I will I will do it. So, here is the lemma. So, this lemma says when you take two elements f and g uh, from this uh, formal uh, power series and then if you take the product how you compute that bilinear form on that product with some other element h ok. So, so we more explicitly if you take three elements f g h inside the formal power series ok this is good enough for us. So, so, maybe I will take it in the lambda by 2. So, then we have, so we want to compute uh, what happens to the product f g and then when you take the bilinear form on this f g comma h. So, this is exactly equal to f times g h plus f h g. Okay and this is true for all elements f g h in your formal power series. So, this is uh, something we will use later to compute uh, what happens if you take the product s rho with some e power gamma ok. So, to do this it is enough to actually consider h being uh, some e power uh, lambda ok. So, let us say that uh, we just uh, do the computation only ok. So, without loss of generality just take h to be e power lambda. So, if you prove it for e power lambda then it is a, a by linearity you actually you have done it for all the elements. So, what if we take h to be e power lambda? So, let us write f to be summation a gamma e power gamma and then g to be summation b gamma e power gamma gamma. So, then you can see that what is f g. So, the f g is given by summation mu in lambda summation a gamma b gamma dash gamma plus gamma dash is equal to mu 
times e power mu. So, this is what f g. So, now if you compute f g comma e power lambda the bracket. So, this is by definition you can easily see that whenever you take e power lambda e power mu the bracket is nothing but the inner product lambda mu times e power lambda plus mu. So, so what is f g times e power lambda? So, you have to just use the linearity and then bring it in. So, this is exactly equal to summation mu in lambda summation a gamma b gamma dash gamma plus gamma dash equal to mu. Okay. So, this is the coefficient that you are having uh, for e power mu. Then the bracket e power mu e power lambda comes. So, that is going to give you the inner product mu comma lambda times e power lambda plus mu. So, this is what you get uh, when you apply it for f g comma e power lambda. So, now uh, if you just compute what is g e power lambda. So, this is going to be exactly summation b gamma or gamma dash gamma lambda e power gamma dash plus lambda where gamma is dash is coming from. So, let us not bother about where the indexing set is running over. So, this is by 2 indeed. Okay. So, so, in particularly uh, yeah, if you take f times g comma e power lambda. So, you can see that this is going to be okay summation over mu summation this. So, this f is going to give you a gamma and then this uh, this element is going to give you b gamma dash but this gamma dash comma lambda will be there in the side and gamma plus gamma dash. So, this is going to be exactly uh, so, if you are interested in uh, running over mu, okay. So, already this e power, so you can run over mu like this and then e power mu plus lambda will be there, okay. So, it is good to have this e power lambda plus mu. So, that is the thing that we are having outside. And similarly, you can write down what will be the f h times g. Okay, if you write down f e power lambda times g, so this is something you can work it out. This is going to be sum over mu summation again gamma plus gamma dash mu a gamma and then gamma times lambda b gamma dash times e power mu plus lambda will come. Okay, if you add these two, then you have to just look at the coefficient of uh, e power mu plus lambda. So, that is the thing we need to equate the coefficient here in this uh, sum. So, this is uh, summation a gamma b gamma dash times mu lambda. So, that is the thing that we need. So, you can see that this and this if you add you will get exactly okay, this is exactly summation a gamma b gamma dash. Okay. So, then this thing will come as common then gamma plus gamma dash will come here times lambda and then gamma gamma dash equal to mu will come. So, but this is exactly equal to summation a gamma b gamma dash times mu mu lambda where gamma plus gamma dash equal to mu. So, this term is exactly matches with this term. Okay. So, that proves that uh, this equality is true for all f g h. Okay. Now, let us see how one can use this to compute uh, something that we wanted. Okay. So, as a corollary, so we can write down the following corollary. 
So, we take this S rho which is by definition the sin the sin of sigma e power sigma rho sigma comes from S n plus 1 which is also given by e power rho product 1 minus e power minus alpha alpha comes from delta plus which can be rewritten as product e power alpha by 2 minus e power minus alpha by 2 alpha comes from delta plus. So, now what we want to compute we want to actually compute what will be the bracket s rho comma uh, e power uh, gamma or given gamma ok. So, you take s rho and then compute bracket s rho e power gamma. So, we want to actually normalize so that we will compute this twice of this ok. So, this is something we want to compute for any ok gamma in let us say lambda by 2. So, now uh, the thing is s rho is being the product ok if you write it as some f 1 etcetera some f n you can easily see that uh, using this formula ok. So, let us recall the formula the bracket f g comma h is nothing but f times bracket g h plus bracket f h times g. So, if you actually think about it by induction you can generalize that formula to any finitely many products. So, if you take the product f 1 etcetera f n comma g. So, this is going to be summation. So, this f 1 etcetera f i hat etcetera f n times this bracket f i comma g will come where i range from 1 to n. So, this hat means you forget that f i ok. So, this hat just means so you omit that particular element you omit f i in the product. In some sense this is just exactly the product f 1 etcetera f 1 divided by f i ok. So, that is exactly this uh, omitting thing. So, this is just follows easily from the induction because we are actually uh, lambda and lambda by 2 both are abelian groups. So, we have we are working in the commutative ring. So, we do not need to worry about the order in which uh, these things are written. So, this is true. So, now using this uh, we can actually see that uh, if we take this twice s rho comma e power gamma. So, this is going to be twice uh, the product e power alpha by 2 minus e power minus alpha by 2 alpha comes from delta plus comma e power gamma. So, what is this? So, this is exactly equal to. So, now you forget only the one thing. So, twice summation s rho divided by e power alpha by 2 minus e power minus alpha by 2 where alpha runs over delta plus then this will be the sum of these uh, two terms. But note that e power alpha by 2 comma e power gamma by definition this is uh, the inner product alpha by 2 comma gamma times e power gamma plus alpha by 2. So, this is going to be exactly times uh, uh, alpha by 2 comma gamma plus alpha by 2 comma gamma times this e power gamma plus alpha by 2 minus e power gamma minus alpha by 2. So, this is the term that you get sorry this is plus ok. So, now if you simplify so this is going to be twice uh, alpha by 2 comma gamma. So, this yeah so that becomes gamma comma alpha oh I have written wrongly ok. So, this only the only one term will come out. So, this is going to be just uh, alpha by 2 gamma gamma because this one gives gamma 
comma alpha by 2 and that one also gives minus alpha by 2 comma gamma this minus that minus will get cancelled. So, then times uh, uh, e power gamma plus alpha by 2 and then plus e power gamma minus alpha by 2 comes ok. So, then if you just compute it again twice s rho comma e power gamma is exactly equal to summation. So, now this 2 and 2 we can we can cancel. So, then it is exactly uh, gamma comma alpha divided by e power alpha by 2 minus e power minus alpha by 2. So, this s rho comes out alpha in delta plus times e power gamma plus alpha by 2 minus sorry plus e power gamma minus alpha by 2. So, this is what we get. So, again we can simplify this this is s rho times summation alpha in delta plus e power gamma gamma comma alpha divided by ok. So, this is uh, now it is like x plus x inverse divided by x minus x inverse. So, this is same as so you can take out x there. So, x square plus 1 1 by x divided by 1 by x x square minus 1. So, it is exactly uh, this thing gets cancelled. So, that is e power alpha plus 1 divided by e power alpha minus 1. So, this is the term that we are getting. So, you just write it like this. So, that means twice s rho comma e power gamma is given by s rho times summation gamma alpha e power gamma e power alpha plus 1 divided by e power alpha minus 1 where alpha runs over delta plus. So, this is something uh, that we will be needing later uh, in the calculations of proving uh, well character formula that will be good enough for us to proceed. So, if we actually take two elements uh, f and g were from the formal power series ring. So, then uh, if we compute uh, this Laplacian on f g, so then one can easily see that this is given by f into Laplacian of g plus Laplacian of f times g plus twice the bilinear form applied on f g, the bracket f g. Okay. So, to prove this uh, again uh, we will prove it only for the basis elements. Now, using the linearity it will be true for all elements of f g. So, so what is the proof? The proof is uh, start with f is equal to e power lambda and g is equal to e power mu. So, then we just go into compute uh, both side and then uh, equate the things. So, you can easily see that uh, the L of f g is going to be Laplacian operator applied on e power lambda plus mu which is same as the norm lambda plus mu square uh, e power lambda plus mu. And similarly, so what is uh, f times L g? So, which is e power lambda times the norm of mu square e power mu. So, which is norm mu square e power lambda plus mu and what is uh, L of f times g which is similarly norm lambda square e power lambda plus mu and what is twice the bracket f g the twice the bracket f g is given by twice lambda mu e power lambda plus mu. So, this is by definition. So, now uh, the equality of this is clear. Uh, from the following uh, trivial equality which actually given by this. So, norm of lambda plus mu square is same as norm lambda square plus norm mu square plus twice the inner product lambda mu. So, this is more or less clear from the definition. So, this proves that uh, whenever you take the Laplacian on the product that is given by this very explicit formula.
okay so so with this uh, maybe i will stop here